हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम बैक टू माय यूट्यूब चैनल आई एम डॉक्टर मयूर करडिले डायरेक्टर ऑफ पुणे स्पाइन इंस्टीट्यूट एंड कंसल्टेंट स्पाइन सर्जन एट जहांगीर हॉस्पिटल टुडे लेट्स डिस्कस दिस एक्साइटिंग टॉपिक ऑफ एंटीरियर लंबर इंटरबॉडी फ्यूजन और कॉमनली नेम्ड एज ए लिव लेट्स नो वॉट एग्जैक्टली इट इज वॉट काइंड ऑफ प्रोसीजर इट इज एंड हु आर द पेशेंट्स हु नीड दिस काइंड ऑफ अ सर्जरी एंड वॉट टू एक्सपेक्ट आउट ऑफ द सर्जरी दिस सर्जरी इज अ कम्प्लीटली डिफरेंट परस्पेक्टिव टू स्पाइन वेर इन Uh, we actually operate through the belly or through the abdomen and so it's going to be something new and exciting and for regular spine health related updates please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and click the bell icon now let's get down to the basics what exactly is a lift you all must have commonly heard about spine surgery being done from the back wherein the incision is at the back side of your spine but have you ever heard that spine surgery can also be done through the belly now in a lift in this surgical approach what we do is we take an incision right down into the abdomen and from there we reach out to the spine now this sounds outrageous right that going through the abdominal organs and then reaching the spine but no that's exactly the myth in a lift god has given us a natural plane which is called the retroperitoneal plane from where we take a small incision onto the belly and through the retroperitoneal plane we reach down into the spine and believe me there's not even a single structure that comes in between that part to the spine so we directly have a direct access or a highway to the disc where exactly the business job has to be done so you must be curious to know who are the patients who need a lift so a lift is used to treat a variety of spinal conditions like uh, spinal instability spondylolisthesis or in patients who need multiple level lumbar fusions so wherein they have either two or three level lumbar fusions so those are basically the patients who would need a lift it's also used as a part of deformity correction procedure it's also used in treating of spinal tumors or vertebral fractures so why exactly a lift the biggest advantage that this surgery offers is that you can reach down or the surgeon can access the spine without disturbing a single paraspinal muscle so which means that in the long term your spine is going to function much better compared to the conventional posterior approach now in a lift uh, you can get in a quite a good lordotic cage inside so that you can maintain the natural harmony and the natural curvature which is called the lordosis of the spine now this in turn has a big bearing on the long term spine health also in a lift we do not touch even a single neural structure so the whole problem or the whole fear of spine surgery that spine surgery can re- lead to neuro deficits or can lead to paralysis or can lead to nerve related injury is almost nil in a lift being minimally invasive there is absolutely little blood loss that happens in this surgery and that's the reason why the recovery is very fast now typically compared to the posterior approach wherein we would always see that patients would take about 2 or 3 days to come uh, come up and start walking with a lift we see that they are ready to walk even in the same evening after the surgery and they're ready to go home within 2 days and believe me the stability that a lift offers is phenomenal you can expect the patient to start all his regular activities including sports within a very short time so how exactly a lift is done or what exactly is the workflow of a lift now once you the patient and the surgeon have decided or have concluded to undergo the a lift procedure the patient has to undergo various steps uh, of doing blood test uh, x-ray imaging mri and take something called as surgical fitness from the physician as well as anesthetist typically we admit the patient one day in, uh, before the surgery on that day uh, you're supposed to clean up your bowels with certain liquids uh, that we give you to clean up the gut the next day early morning when you're taken up into the operation theater uh, you will be given general anesthesia now typically the patient is positioned in a lordotic position on the operating table we clean up your skin we uh, sanitize it we drape you out and then typically the incision is taken right onto the belly most of the times we try to take a horizontal incision which is also called as the bikini incision which is hidden and heals up very fast at times when we are doing a multi level surgery we need to take a vertical incision now once the skin is incised we then follow a natural retroperitoneal plane and then reach out to the spine now with skillful uh, skills of mobilizing the vessels or uh, uh, exposing the disc we can safely reach out to the disc do a discectomy do a good end plate preparation and then put in the a lift cage 
typically we either use your own uh, autograph bone or we could be using cadaveric bone graft. That discussion will be done with the patient in the preoperative time. Now, once that is done, once the cage is inserted, a plate is put, out, put on, once hemostasis is achieved, we remove all the retractors that we have put in and all the retroperitoneal structures or the peritoneum that we have mobilized that all falls into place. Then we just suture the rectus sheath, close up the skin and boom, the surgery is done. We put up waterproof dressing and the patient is shifted out to the out of the operation theater. At times, patients undergoing ALIF may need additional posterior pedicle screw fixation, which can be done in the same sitting itself. So, what to expect in the post-operative period? Now, early on, once the surgery is done and the patient is shifted to the room, and once the anesthesia recovers, our physiotherapist and the team of doctors will be visiting you and asking you to start moving your limbs, asking you to start sitting up. And in the same evening, our physiotherapy team will be coming in and helping you to stand up and walk again. Believe me, our patients are surprised that if they can really walk up onto the same day of the surgery and that really happens. Now, once you gain up that confidence, start walking around, you rest up in the same evening. The next morning, as your bowel sounds pick up, as you start passing gases, we can start giving you your solid diet. Within a day or two after that, once you're comfortable, mobilizing by yourself, going down to the washroom and your pain is under control, you can go back home. Once you go home, you'll be prescribed certain tablets to keep your pain levels under control and help you recover generally. And as time goes by, you'll be much more comfortable walking around easily and say within a week or two, you're, you feel back that you're doing completely well. You'll be typically called back to the clinic for a wound check at about five to six days. The dressing is changed on that time. And by about 10 days, the wound really heals up very well. As time passes by, say about after a month, we start on with uh, strengthening exercises wherein we want to st you to strengthen your core, start walking better. And believe me, by the end of a month, people usually start feeling very comfortable with the ALIF procedure. With the phenomenal stability that we gain with ALIF, we typically would let you do your sport related activities by about six months. The fusion that happens in ALIF takes about six months to a year. And believe me, the fusion is so solid that your spine becomes strong again. And there, there's absolutely no restriction of activities that we would advise after the ALIF procedure after six months of, of surgery. So we have talked about what is ALIF, when it is required, how the procedure is done, about the post-operative recovery and what all the patient can expect after this surgery. So if at all you've been advised a lumbar fusion surgery, please discuss with your spine surgeon whether ALIF could be an option for you. Because with this modern technique, I believe that you can get a much better outcome. So if you found out this video to be helpful and you think you or your friends or family could benefit out of it, please don't forget to share this video with, uh, with them. And for further spine health related updates like these, please subscribe to our channel and don't forget to click the bell icon. And until the next time that we meet, stay happy and have a healthy spine.